Hello class, this is chapter 7, counting 350, corporate finance. We're going to look at stocks, equity, characteristics, and valuation. So learning objectives. One, explain what equity is and identify some of the features and characteristics of a preferred stock and the common stock. Describe how stock prices values are determined and A, dividends grow at a constant rate and B, dividend growth is non-constant. So that's learning objective two. Objective three, describe some approaches or techniques other than strict application of time value money models that investors use to value stocks. And four, identify factors that affect stock prices. So preferred stock, hybrid security, similar to bonds with fixed dividend payments, similar to common stock because dividends are not required to be paid and there is no specific maturity date. There's also common stock. Preferred stock features par value, the nominal or face value of a stock or bond. There's also cumulative dividends. Any preferred dividends not paid in previous periods must be paid before common dividends can be distributed. Maturity has no specific maturity date. Priority to assets and earnings. Preferred dividends are paid after interest on debt is paid. Preferred dividends must be paid before common stock dividends are paid. Control of firm voting rights. Almost all preferred stock is non-voting. Okay, that's one important component. You know, the you cannot vote with uh, with a preferred stock. Okay, convertibility preferred stock that can be converted to common stock at the option of the investor. So this is kind of controlled by the investor. Other provisions, call provision gives the issuing corporation the right to call the preferred stock for redemption. Sinking fund calls for the purchase and retirement of a given percentage of the preferred stock at particular times. Participating shares participates with common stockholders in the distribution of the firm's earnings. So common stock features the par value legally re represented represents a stockholder's minimum financial obligation in the event the corporation is liquidated. Okay, Dividends, the firm has no legal obligation to pay common stock dividends. Maturity generally has no specific maturity date. Priority to assets and earnings, dividends can be paid only after interest on debt and preferred dividends are paid. Control of the firm, again the voting rights. Common stockholders have the right to elect the firm's directors and to vote on various proposals. So that's one difference between preferred stock and common stock. Preemptive right. Give stakeholders the right to purchase additional shares of stock sold by the firm on a pro rata basis before the shares can be offered to new investors. So they get the first dibs if uh, new stocks are sold. Okay, So keep that in mind. When you looked at preferred stock, that wasn't an option there. Types of common stock, classified stock, a common stock that is given a special designation, such as class A, class B, etc., to meet special needs of the company. Founder shares, a class of stock owned by the firm's founders who give or who have sole voting rights in the early years of public or going public. Equity instruments in international markets. American depository receipts, certificates created by banks that represent ownership in stocks of foreign countries, foreign equity, Yankee stock, stock of a foreign company traded in the United States, Euro stock, stock traded in a country other than the company's home country except in the United States. Stock valuation models, terms, D and T, the dividend expected to be paid at the end of year T. Uh, by the way, this is a little hat on top of that P and the D, they call that a hat. So P, uh, P of T, the expected price of the stock at the end of year T. P of O, or P is zero, the actual price of stock at the end of year T. G is the expected growth rate of dividends or in dividends. R sub S or R of S, required rate of return, the, min the minimum rate investors demand to invest in the stock. Stock valuation model, the terms, here we go, D of T divided by P of 0 equals the expected dividend yield during the coming year. P of 1 minus P of 0 divided by P of, P of 0, that's almost like a, those that's looking at a beginning and 
beginning minus ending divided by beginning. So that's how you look at expected gains yield during the coming year. R of S, the expected rate of return during the coming year, dividend yield plus capital gains yield. Stock valuation models, the terms, if the expected rate of return R of S is greater than or equal to the required rate of return R of S, this stock is a good investment. Otherwise, it is not a good investment. So R of S is greater than, or R, R hat of S is greater than R of S. So the expected rate of return greater than R of S, which is the required rate. So bad investment if it's, if your R of S is less than your R of S. Okay, keep that in mind. Expected dividends as the basis for stock valuation. Here's a cash flow timeline. Okay, so zero, when we first start, year one, two, infin, infinite to negative one, all the way to infinity positive, okay, or positive infinity. Okay, so that's the stock's intrinsic value. So whenever we can calculate that as we move forward, present value, present value of D, present value of D to the infinite minus one, and then present value of D to infinite, infinity. So, um, so this means the sum of present values equals P of zero, which like we said is stock intrinsic value. Expected dividends as the basis for stock values. Here's the stock value. Again, this is, uh, this is our, our growth rate right here. So we're taking our D of one, D of two, all the way to D infinity divided by our growth rate. So to infinity, T equals one, okay. And then we're going, here's our growth rate to, to time t. Value in stocks with constant or normal growth, the growth that is expected to continue into the foreseeable future about at about the same rate as, the, as that of the economy as a whole. G is constant growth stated as a decimal. Value in stocks with constant or normal growth. Okay, so here's the, the formulas whenever you look at it. To, to time period one, time period two, and again our growth rate. Value of a constant growth stock, so this is kind of how we would look at it, D1 divided by R of S minus G, our growth rate. So present value of dividends of a constant growth stock, D is zero equals 1.6, uh, G equals 5%, R of S equals 20%, so here's our D of zero, 1.6, okay, and then amount, dollar amount of each dividend. So 160, 1.05, because we get that 5% there, and our time T, okay? Present val value of each dividend. So 160 divided by 1.5 to the T over 1.2, okay? These are formulas we saw earlier. And what we're doing is filling these D of zero, D of zero G and R of S into these, into the formulas. So P of zero is a, is a sum of, of infinity to T equal one, present value of D of T, area under the P, P of the present value curve, which is equal to 1120. So it's all of this area underneath here. Okay. So special case of constant growth, G equals zero. Okay, so here's a formula, D of zero, one plus G. Now notice the one plus G is on top of our growth rate, R of S minus G, so equals D, divided by RS. So let's see, expected rate of return on a constant growth stock, R of S expected rate of return, expected dividend yield right here, and expected growth rate or capital gains yield, which is our G. Valuing stocks with non-constant growth, non-constant growth, the part of the life cycle of a firm in which its growth is either much faster or much slower than that of the economy as a whole, okay? Valuing stock with non-constant here step one start computing the dividends that are expected to be paid during the non-constant growth period Continue computing dividends until you compute the last dividend that is affected by the constant non-constant growth Using the investors required rate of return R of S compute the present values of all the non-constant growth dividends and then sum the present values again We're summing them up or adding them all up so step two compute the first dividend that is affected by the constant growth rate. Use the first constant growth dividend to compute the value of stock at the end of the non-constant growth period. I know these are all words, but this will be explained here in a bit. All future dividends will grow at a 
constant rate, g of norm. A modified version of the constant growth equation is used to compute the value of the stock at the end of a non-constant growth period, p of t. Find the present value of p of t. So step three, sum the results of step one and step two to find the intrinsic value of the stock p of zero. Okay, so dividends will grow at 20% rate for the next three years. G1, G2 is 20%. Beginning of year four, dividends will grow at a 5% rate, which will continue for the next rest of for the rest of the term's life. IE means example, G4 equals all the way to G infinity, 5% equals G at norm. Last dividend paid was a dollar. Example, D is zero equals one dollar. R of S is 15%. So here's what we'll look at. So compute non-constant non growth dividends, one times 1.20, dollar twenty. 1.2, $1.20 times 1.2. Notice we, we, we gained 20 cents. On here we gained uh, 44 cents. Then we gained 72 cents. Keep in mind though, all we're, this is cycling. The 120 becomes our principal. Then we're adding our growth to that. So then we're getting that calculation. So then $1.44 times $1.44 times $1.20, our growth rate, 1.72. So if we were to do this again for D of 4, we would put 1.782 times 120. So keep that in mind. That's what that's saying. Compute present value of non-constant growth dividends, PV of non-constant growth dividends, 120, or 1.15, and 1, 2, 3. This can go all the way up to infinity, like it was saying before. Okay. So 172, and then all we're doing is dividing it by one point. 1.5 uh, or growth so three dollars and 26 cents or three dollars point two six eight five okay so compute the first constant rate growth dividend 1.782 times 1.05 equals 1.8144 use d of 4 to compute the value of the stock at the end of the year three the end of non-constant growth so 1.84, which is this value, divided by 1.5. So we're taking the difference of those. So $18.1440. Compute the present value of P of 3. Present value of P of 3 is going to take our $18 and 0 0.1440 divided by 1.15 to the third power. That's our time because it tells us P of 3. So we'll get, we'll get $11.93. So sum the results of step one and step two to find the intrinsic value of the stock, 3.2685 plus eleven dollars and ninety-three thousandths. By the way, that's how you would say that. This would be three dollars and twenty-two six two thousand six hundred eighty-five thousandths. Or is that ten thousandths? I think it's ten thousandths. Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand. So it'd be ten thousand. So this will be ninety-three ten thousands, which will equal fifteen and nineteen one thousand nine hundred and eighty-five thousandths, or equivalent to fifteen dollars and twenty cents. Other stock valuation models, PV ratios, price earnings ratios. The higher the PE ratio, the more investors are willing to pay for each dollar earned by the firm. P.E. ratio gives an indication of a stock's payback period. So market price per share of common stock divided by earnings per share. Keep in mind, common stock are the ones we want to have. Common stock are the ones that we can, we have voting rights. Common stocks are the ones that we have the ability to, be, to purchase new stocks that are issued. So keep that in mind. Economic value added approach. Economic value added. EVA equals EBIT times 1 minus T. So average cost of funds minus average cost of funds times invested capital. Okay. Changes in stock prices. Prices move opposite to change in rates of return. Prices move in the same direction as changes in cash flows expected from the stock in the future. So that's the end of this slide presentation. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to email me or comment and let me know how everything is going. Thank you.